Hey guys, here I am with my 10 cards, one collection using the Milk and Cookies Doodle Bug collection. I'm showing you some of the things I will be using. I have some stickers, some odds and ends, which are those cardboard cutouts or cardstock cutouts, my packet pattern paper, some washi tape, and my sprinkles. So I decided to do something different since the Simon Says Stamp Kit was a Milk and Cookies basically kit. Um, I thought I would change it up and do my card sizes 5.5 by 5.5. My card bases I had purchased at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. I had, that in my, had them in my stash. So I thought this would be a nice change. So they all measure 5.5 by 5.5. So here I've taken a square stitch die. I've cut out a piece of pink cardstock. To make this video quick, I have already pre-cut and kind of came up with a design for my card so it's not so time consuming. So here my cardstock is cut five and a half by five and a half. And what's great is that these these card bases use a good chunk of the the pattern paper. You don't have much waste. Which I hate scraps. I hate keeping scraps. I hate wasting scraps. So I do keep them, but I I never go back to them. I rarely go back to my scrap pile. So I like this size card. Anyway, I take some fun foam, or I'm sorry, some foam tape, and go ahead and glue these little odds and ends cardstock pieces. All supplies will be listed below. If you saw a haul I did recently, I don't remember which one, um, I had a big sheet of Milk and Cookies stickers, and I completely forgot I had those, so I don't bring those in to this video. But that completed card one, and I feel like I'm echoing because I'm getting stopped up. So sorry if I sound funny in this video. <laughs> so for card two, I've taken a piece of the pattern paper and you can barely see it, but it does have a print on it. It is just tone on tone, cookies, candy canes, I believe, and some other things. And I'm taking this piece of um, the cardstock, Milk and Cookies, it, hearing it and I used those two stickers I used a stitched circle die and these are some stickers pop I think they're called pops pop stickers that I got from the not too shabby shop I will link obviously link them below and I adhere that to the other circle and that completes card two these cards are kept really simple I am um, to be honest I kind of had a hard time with designs I love this collection but since I just did 10 cards, one kit with the Simon Says Stamp Milk and Cookies kit, that I kind of was like, hmm, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> so these cards are kept very simple, especially since Christmas is right around the corner. If you needed to make something quick and you have this in your stash, then these would be great. So I take my other Doodle Pop sticker, the little tree. I go in and adhere that to a stitched circle cut out with the green I'm sorry the red and then I cut out these little green ones and adhere them with some of my Tombow Mono liquid adhesive just a a random design I'm not going to stick anything anything to those I just wanted some break in the pattern of the Christmas trees and then off to the side I do have my sentiment which in the Doodlebug paper pack, there's a couple sheets of sentiments you can use, and I just used that. And that will complete card three. For card four, again, taking a piece of pattern paper, adhering it to my card base. I've cut out a square piece of pink cardstock. I do not have a die this big, so I just measured it out. Here I'm taking a white jelly roll pen and going along the whole edge to create a faux stitch. I'm trying to show you, you can barely see it, but it is a subtle detail. Go ahead and adhere this to my card base. And then I've cut out a circle again. I kind of wanted to make sure I use these Doodle Pop stickers, so that's why you're kind of seeing them first, and it's kind of a similar design. I do take some of these little odds and end pieces, these cupcakes. Oh, 
I do take a piece of two pieces of washi tape and kind of adhere them to the top as if the washi tape is holding up that pink cardstock. I thought that was kind of cute. Go ahead and attach my sentiment. Have a sweet Christmas. And then I do attach these cupcakes to the bottom after I hear my sentiment. I add some fun, oh, I keep saying fun foam, Ugh. some foam tape and go ahead and attach them to the bottom. I do attach one or two of them flat. Okay, so I, t I um, the, this one right here, I do. No, I attach them all flat. Okay. Sorry, guys. I made these last week, and I'm just getting around to editing the video and doing a voiceover. Um, I do take my sprinkles, and these this size of the sprinkles fit perfectly on top of the cupcakes. So I go ahead and add that to the top as the cherry, and that completes that card. Really cute. For card five, again, I'm taking this piece of cardstock and I will go ahead and adhere this to my card base. I've cut, used my Newton's Nook that I used in a previous video, fancy trim, fancy tags. I love these tags so much. So I used some of the pattern paper, cut that out, cut my little scallop end on the bottom, and then I'm using some twine in my stash. I go ahead and adhere it to this piece of vellum. The pattern I chose to use was very busy, so the vellum softens it up a bit. I'm going to trim the ends of my twine. I do adhere a glue dot to the bow to, to make sure it, it doesn't move around. It keeps it in place. Add some foam squares to my little gingerbread characters. These foam squares I purchased from Joann's. They're by Sparkle & Company. They're my favorite, but they are high. They got a big profile. So if you want something real with a lot of dimension, these are great. If you don't, definitely don't use them. They have the size I use for the gingerbread and then the little mini ones I just used for the sentiment. And so it says, we belong together. And then on this one, I'm just using some glue dots. I'm going to adhere it flat. This is Merry Christmas. And then I do add some sprinkles randomly around the card. And that completes that card. So for card six, I kind of wanted to create a little scene. So I originally was going to use green, but I decided to go for the red side. So I go ahead and adhere this piece of paper. It, there is a little print to it. I believe it's just polka dot. It's very subtle, but in real life you can see it more. So here is a notebook paper embossing folder. I kind of wanted to create beadboard. And this, I don't have a, a basic lined embossing folder, so I just use this. Kind of measuring out where I want to cut it. Go ahead and trim that. It's not perfect. I think it's a little slanted, but it will do. It's okay. And so I have these pieces off to the side that I wanted to use. And so I go ahead and trim it up. And actually the side I'm putting tape on is the side I should have adhered to my cardstock because the creases go in. There's no bump, if that makes any sense, like this side, but no big deal. And then I take this strip left over from me trimming off my cardstock or uh, pattern paper, and that'll be my carpet. So I'll trim those edges off. And then I go ahead and add some foam tape to my Christmas tree and my little table. And then I have that little vellum piece of window. So the odds and ends come with little vellum pieces. And I like the window. And how I adhere my vellum is I run it through my Xyron sticker maker. And this is a piece of pattern paper 
that has snowflakes on it. So I thought, well, I want it to look like it's snowing outside. So I run that through my sticker maker, press it down nice and good, and go ahead and peel it off. And now my piece of vellum is sticky on the back and I don't see any of the adhesive which is a problem if you use vellum. You don't want, you want to hide the adhesive. So I go ahead and add this to the piece of pattern paper minus the windowsill and cut it out. And then I can go ahead and add my regular adhesive to the back. And then I go ahead and stick that on my card as my little scene. I actually really like this card. As if it's nice and cozy, it's snowing outside, and it is Christmas Eve, and they are waiting waiting on Santa to arrive. I fiddled with this a few times because I felt like it was crooked. I was using the dots on the pattern paper to kind of guide me. I didn't press down too hard, so I was able to rip it up. And then I go ahead and add my sentiment. Santa Claus is coming to town. I did think about adding some sequins or some Nouveau drops to the Christmas tree, but I did not. I Like I said, I, ke I kept these cards really simple. So for card seven, I've taken this piece of pattern paper. To the left, you can see two vellum pieces I have already run through my Xyron sticker maker. I wanted to use those. That is that same snowflake paper that I used from by the back of my window on the previous card. Here I'm just cutting my own snow banks and adhering them to my card and then I will trim it up. I wanted to use this little odds and ends piece with the Santa coming out of the chimney. I thought that was so cute. So this is a stitched circle die and it fit perfectly with my December 25th sticker and I I'm attempting to get it on there so it is even. The stitching is a little covered up. I didn't care at this point. I just want it to be, it to be on there even. And what I should have done is stick it on there, then cut it out first instead of cutting out my circle first. Add some foam tape to my little Santa and my little badge sentiment. Go ahead and adhere Santa down. Then adhere my sentiment down. And then I decided I wanted another snowbank to kind of cover the bottom of the chimney so it looked somewhat more realistic. <laughs> if that's even possible with Doodlebug, which I don't think so. <laughs> it's a little whimsical. So I take this scrap of paper, I cut it again, cut my own snowbank. If you um, don't want to cut your own, you can always purchase a die to do this, but it's real easy if you use big scissors and kind of keep them moving. Add some sprinkles and I decided to go ahead and pull out my googly eyes and I go ahead and add googly eyes to Santa. I'm undecided if I like that or not. I mean, it's cute, but I think when you add googly eyes, it definitely changes the recipient, maybe. I don't know. It makes it a little bit more kid-friendly, I guess. Although Doodlebug is very kid-friendly. Um, these kind of add a silly element. So when I added them, I'm like, oh gosh, that looks cheap. But whatever, they easily pop off, so... <laughs> Just an option. <laughs> so that completes that card. It's cute. So for card eight, I take some more washi tape. I did want to use some some of this washi tape since I did purchase it. And I, I don't use washi tape that often, but I, I love the stuff. As long as I know how to use it. Otherwise, I used to not like it as much because I never knew what to do with it. But when I do use it and I like it, I always think it looks good. So I'm just pulling from my those three rolls I have. Um, I just use the Happy Holidays and then the gingerbread and the candy canes. And I'm here, I'm just filling in the spots. And what's nice about washi tape is you can be kind of messy with it and it looks really good. I like the ripped edges and the kind of overlapping. So I wanted to use these sweet little gingerbread men. So I go ahead and pop them up with those sparkling company big old dimensionals. Pop them in the center. And then I add a big heart. 
and there's that smaller sheet of dimensionals. You get a ton, and the pack is like $1.99. So if you have a Joann's next to you, definitely go check it out if you haven't already. Go ahead and add some clear Spectrum Noir sparkle to my heart. And then that is it. For card nine, I wanted to make sure I used this sweet little Doodle Pop Santa sticker before all my cards were complete. So I add the pattern paper that has all the little Santa heads. Go ahead and put him on a stitched circle piece of cardstock so he doesn't get lost in the background. The odds and ends packet had the doodle, um, sorry, the odds and ends packet had this little Santa lettering sentiment, if you want to call it that. Uh, it added the Stampin' Dimensionals, or the foam squares, whatever, to my sentiment so it stands nice and tall. Add some tape adhesive to my Santa, put him in the center. And then I have this little sentiment down below the Santa that I'm going to add some dimension to and go ahead and adhere that down. It says, Happy Holidays. And then I believe that completes this card, maybe. Adding a dimension there to kind of get rid of any dips going on. I do add some sprinkles to them. And then that will complete this card. So finally for card 10, I had all these really cute sweet images, like sweets. <laughs> and then of course the pattern paper I chose is all about sweets. It has the cookies, cakes, mixing bowls, rolling pin, all that in there. I adhere that to my card base. I take this piece of vellum that I've trimmed down a little bit smaller than my card base. And I've taken these square stitched, uh, I've taken a square stitch die and cut out four squares. I'm going to adhere each square to the vellum. And again, the vellum is to soften the background so the main image sticks out. Go ahead and add adhesive to the back of the vellum only in the spot where the squares are so you don't see it once I get my ATG gun working properly. And then on each square I'm going to add one of the little cardstock images out of the odds and ends pack. And it all has something to do with sweets. And I'm putting each little square will have its own sentiment but they all kind of relate to what the theme is of the card. Here are some vellum pieces. Um, I didn't run through these through my sticker maker. I just used a glue dot at this point. Those are so small, I didn't worry too much about it. You really can't see the glue dot. So for that, if you have a smaller sticker maker, go for it. But I, my sticker maker is big and I don't want to waste adhesive on three little pieces. Pop up those little cookies and then I pop up this little tin of cupcakes, or I don't pop them up, I adhere them down flat. Kind of tuck it behind that cake. So the two, the like bunt cake and the cookies are popped up and then my little gumdrops and cupcakes aren't, kind of create some balance. Go ahead and adhere my sentiment for the little cake down at the bottom. It says you take the cake. And, not sure what I'm doing here, add some dimensionals. That one says, hello sugar for the gumdrops. And then, these strips are small, so I had to trim down some of my dimensionals. Your one smart cookie. And then I go ahead and add this sentiment to the pan of cakes. Hello, sweet cakes or the cupcakes. 
and that completes that card. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Here are some of the things I have left over. Not that that was really a kit. Those little stickers were very small. I ended up not using them. They're just too tiny. But um, we'll definitely keep them in my stash. They're adorable. Here are some still shots of each of the cards. Let me know what you liked. And I will catch you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.